Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Robbie with Believe in the Run. And this is Megan with Believe in the Run. And you're listening to The Drop, our weekly podcast of all things running and a little bit of nonsense. And I mean, with that, we'll get right into it. We're in the middle of grit. It is January. This is it's the, very cold. It's the winter grit. Like today, Baltimore, where we're running, it was like something 21 degrees Fahrenheit, but the feels like was nine degrees I feel like we're finally getting into that winter grit. Because when winter grit started, I think the first day it was like 70 degrees or something like that. Yeah. And it wasn't feels like nine, that's for sure. Yeah. Of course, I didn't start running grit till like yesterday. Robbie's going to come you from behind. You timed it with the weather. He's, yeah. He's going to come from behind. He's going to get 500 miles. <laughs> he started today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I uh, decided to forego the tropical weather and start with the four layers. And just kidding, I wore two layers. I have to say, I took three days off to because my foot was feeling weird, and it wasn't as hard taking three days off now as it would be in the summer or spring or even fall. Yeah, like it's like, oh, three days off, I can handle yeah, that. That's weird. My <laughs> foot hurts too. I can sleep in when it's nine degrees outside. Yeah, hey, have a great run, Meg. <laughs> but then I gave you a foot massage and everything. Everything's fine. It's magic fingers. <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking of which, Meg, how's your grit coming? How was that the transition? Magic fingers. <laughs> I don't know. Just let it go. Yeah, okay. Go with it. I made it something. Roll. Um, grit is going well. Running's going well. Feeling good. Um, I just, I really don't like the cold. Like getting out this morning was really difficult, especially because I walk the dog first thing in the morning. And so I go out there and I know what's oh, coming. That sounds So awful. it's like you go out there and you're freezing and then you're like, now I got to go out there again. But that's a little different than... I would say running, like going out there with the dog. It's like you're coming out of a warm house. You're standing around. Does it make you regret having a dog? Yeah. No, I love him so much. <laughs> for real? I do but, love him. But, but here's I, the thing is when I, I wonder that th when you're walking him and he won't poo and you're like, you got to poo so I can go inside. You're just like, please. <laughs> How do you make that? No. Well, fast? I, cause Thomas wants to walk him for like 30 seconds and I go for a nice little 10 minute uh -huh. walk, 15 minute walk in the morning. And so I don't have any problems. I'm a utilitarian walker. We go out, you do your business, we go back inside. But so in the summertime, these walks were very enjoyable because I'd bring my coffee. Uh -huh. I'd go walk the dog. Right. We'd do a little I stroll around the neighborhood. Birds are singing. But now <laughs> it's nine degrees outside. I don't even carry a coffee because it'll be cold in two seconds. Right. And you got to wear like mittens and yeah, you got a dog leash and yeah. you have to pick up the poop, but you got to have a free hand. You got to kick it in your neighbor's yard. <laughs> yeah. You do that. Yeah. No. Kidding. So yeah, it's just it's hard to get out there and run, but but you've been doing it. I on Monday, to be honest, I got on the treadmill. Mm. I I did treadmill yesterday too. There's no shame in the treadmill. I yeah. think the treadmill little, is just a little as, bit of shame. <laughs> there is a little bit during of shame during grit. grit. Yeah, <laughs> I felt it. I felt the shame. I don't feel any shame. I was I was on it. It's just as much work. I can. I mean, you see all these people in Minnesota going out in negative four. Hey, wait. This is my defense. You're basically like. This is my defense. Okay, go ahead. Training we're, for Florida. We're running Donna in February. <laughs> I am heat acclimating. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's actually a good defense. I am okay. actually testing Zwift. And uh, Zwift, I need to get oh, my right. runs in there because it's actually... It's weird how that testing ends in April. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, but no, it, it is great. I've been getting in my miles. I took three days off and I still... I My foot was hurting and it got to the point where... It wasn't feeling worse when I ran. Mm -hmm. It was just still hurting. So I was just like, as long as it's not getting worse, yeah, I'm back at it. I like this line of reasoning. So I'm I'm back in the hunt. But I'm probably behind Megan by quite a bit. I, I checked it today. You are. I am. <laughs> well, I haven't added. I haven't added my miles. Oh, today. you need to add that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm like at the bottom of the barrel. But that, like I said, a start yesterday. Come back, kid. Yeah. Wait, not really. Did we not? No, the first day was the the Saturday Classic. Why didn't you come out that day? Uh, let's see, because I had COVID. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That little thing going around. Uh, yeah, but thanks I, for not coming. <laughs> <laughs> and but yeah, I so like basically started yesterday. I think I'm just resetting, kind of, and I, uh, you know, I alluded to trying to turn over a new leaf in the email this past week which is by the way i'm sorry if that sounded depressing that anyone <laughs> anyone who read that it, it wasn't meant to be it was meant to be like i feel very hopeful 
it was just like I understand like people over the last over the last two years it's been you know it was an open arm if you need a hug you get one here it was like hey like we're all the pandemic has been like crazy obviously but just like trying to get past that and make this year like take take back what kind of we were before that so i i actually have been uh, I t- oh yeah i ran into you on the run today Megan. yeah and i was like all of a sudden this stranger comes sprinting <laughs> up next to me i i ran ahead of you so you weren't freaked out that was nice of you yeah because i would have been if you just popped up right i like behind. came off the street but like ran in front of her instead of like just chasing her down because it's behind. dark out you know and if and i had headphones in so if, like yeah. all of a sudden there was this dude and robbie's super scary yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i had like covered head to toe and yeah because um, it's cold out. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so I was, I, I'm kind of just trying to restart my running, which is, I felt like I was under a lot of pressure last year, either to like, just make sure I do a marathon, make sure I do this or like get, I have to do this to prove whatever, you know? And I feel like I was just, but I also was like not in a good mental state. So I was like forcing myself to run when I really didn't want external pressure versus <laughs> intrinsic yeah and so i was like even though i was for a while consistently doing like marathon training it was like bad marathon training it was like squeezing in runs randomly like waking up the last second jumping out the door oh. you know it was just like and with kids in a family that's just rough it was just every every run pretty much sucked like oh. not fun i mean do, that's the thing is funny we were just having a conversation with someone about you know, there's expectations. Like when you get married, one of the first questions people start asking, are you guys going to have kids? You know, if you're a runner, you get asked, oh, are you going to run a marathon? Is it possible that it's just not something that is a high priority thing for you? Uh, maybe, but I I don't think it was that. I think it was just, like I said, a lot of the other stuff going on and just this like... Like you sent me that Billy Yang yeah, video, say. which was like really good, and it described everything that I was feeling like exactly. So, and so, don't just skip over that. Maybe tell people yeah. what that. I think it was called. It was called the Good Life, yeah. the video that, and it was really it was good. It was only just seven minutes. And it's kind of like a confessional where he's like talking to the camera and revealing like the last two years. How you know, obviously, it was hard on everyone. In the beginning it was like everyone's it was like almost fun in a way in the beginning, and then it just like ground to a halt and now we're the last six months especially i feel like it's been in this like limbo space where he called it languishing which is like it's you're not depressed but you're also just like not not, no not growing you're just in one place and that's how i felt like the last year where it's like i'm not being creative i'm not learning new things i'm not reading books you know it's just kind of just like each day is the same like dude i gotta get out like do you feel like everybody's just like waiting for that it's it's almost like when you're at the end of class and you're watching yeah. the minutes go down you're not paying attention in class you're not enjoying the freedom that that bell's gonna have once right. you get out of class it's just waiting it's like that's a good yeah. description it's also how i Analogy. felt when i had like a desk job when you had arbitrary uh, hours and you're like for sure you're watching the clock to see when you get home you're not doing anything productive Right. You're just waiting. wasting time. It's just yeah. wasting time. And I feel like it for me when I saw the Billy Yang thing and I listened to you talking about maybe what some of the stuff that you were going through, that's how I saw it is like we're all just kind of waiting for that. You just want someone to say pandemic's over. Pandemic's <laughs> over or back to normal. It's not even back to normal. I don't care if it goes back to normal, if we have a new normal. What it is, it's just like say let the gun go off let's go let's yeah. let's start that, the yeah, race yeah. it could be standing it's it, you could equate it to standing in the uh starting line and if they kept delaying the race you're just gonna keep going <laughs> yeah Gee, i just want to get this freaking over with and yeah that's a good that's a really good way to put it but the thing is with the in other issues of your life it's kind of like things that you can control but the, p- the pandemic and everything it brings with it is kind of existen- existential so it's like it feels so much beyond your control. So I felt like I needed to bring it back and be like, well, this is what I can control. And so I'm going to do these things. And then it's just like, what else can I do? I just was like, wanted to do something simple to start out. And so I actually talked to Taylor, our trail reviewer and a couple other friends. And we're just doing pretty something simple, which is 
waking up a half an hour early, like intentionally and just like taking, um, 10 minute blocks and doing something that, uh, you know, we want to improve. So it's like writing or meditation or, uh, like a strength core routine that's 10 minutes, you know? So it's like very manageable because I think a lot of people and myself included have goals in the past like, oh, I'm going to get up an hour early and do like <laughs> right for two hours and do a hit workout <laughs> yeah. for like a half an hour every day. And it's like that always fails. So I was like, this sounds manageable and something that especially if I'm doing it with other people, we can talk about it. And I mean, this is the first week I've been doing it, but. It's, so we'll check in next week. Yeah. <laughs> and see if it's still going on. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. But it's really been, even just like a few days, it's, it makes, it feels like your day is so much better. Yeah. And even if you don't stick with something like that, I think just sometimes shaking things up and yeah. doing something different gives you like a good feeling. Yeah. And it's just like, I'm, I'm, it, even if it doesn't seem like anything, it's making a move in a direct, like making a move in a direction. Like we say, waiting in the, in the um, shoot to start a race. Sometimes just moving forward doesn't matter if it's a PR or just getting out of the gate is, is something. So whether, regardless of whether or not, we'll check in and see if that's still happening. All right, but, that's actually good to say it on here because yeah. I'll feel even more. Yeah, next week everybody's gonna hear <laughs> Robbie sticking with it. Um, I get it too. I mean, I I do. I'm doing like little things to kind of like keep keep it uh keep stuff fresh but yeah it's it's, it'll be fun i feel like you guys have way more control of your life like like you're just good at maintaining habits and routines i think and i'm very much like it's not one of my strong suits for sure it because like for us i do believe it's a routine thing like it like i saw somebody post don't make resolutions make routines and Mm -hmm. i i do agree with that it's like if i incorporate something into to my daily life and it's why i struggle with like meditation because i i don't think i've set it up in the right way while i meditate quite a bit like last year i think out of the 365 days in some form i meditated all three 365 days but i like to use the app to kind of measure it Mm -hmm. and i think throughout the uh, app it was like I had 324 days oh, or wow, something like that. But cool. it's the stuff I learned, like, uh, I'll give you an example. I don't, I, I need to probably set aside time to figure out, like, every day I'm going to do it at this time. Because what I do is I, I, I can get up and I can go for my run. I can drink my coffee. I can do it. But then I feel as soon as we start getting ready for work, and Megan can attest to this because, like, uh, I get irritable. As soon as she's like, mm-hmm. can we go to the office or whatever? I'm like, yeah, baby, yeah. you know, it's like that because I know as soon as I get here, it's it's a reaction it's like there's stuff I have to do and it's on my list and then there's stuff that pops up and before I know it it's the end of the day and we're wrapping things up and so squeezing in the meditation but I have found ways I guess I've been doing it long enough now I've been doing it probably for three years that like I'll find myself in a moment stopping and checking my breathing and and focusing on something that you know feeling gravity or, or whatever it is and, and do a mini meditation. It's not the same thing, mm-hmm. but you know, just trying to incorporate it into your life. I think you have to attach it to another habit. Mm-hmm. That's what I've learned. It's so like, what have I attached running to? Drinking no, running is your, first? running is your habit that you okay. formed and that you do and that you are confident and comfortable doing every day yeah. and you want to do it. Yes. You attach things to the running and that's how you'll keep doing them. Yeah. So okay. like a two minute meditation before you got for your run. Or a ten minute meditation before you go for your run, yeah. or when you get back from your run. What do you What do you do? I don't meditate at all. <laughs> but, but what are your But what are your habits uh, aside from running? I don't know if it's a habit or a compulsion, but you are always the emails and the work stuff. I'm like just not always. very good at turning off ever. Oh, was well, that good though? I don't know. No. Yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> like, there are some advice. times, Robbie, where I'm like, just to stop, <laughs> just stop. turn off. Like, doesn't your don't you go crazy? I'm always, here's the thing is I'm always doing things, but I feel like it's actually. She goes crazy if she's not it's, doing something. But it, no, but it's, it's balanced in a way that like, like I'm cooking dinner while maybe you're like on your phone. Like I am, I'm away from digital. Mm-hmm. Like I'm taking the dog for a That's walk. True. I'm going for a run. I'm cooking dinner. I'm doing laundry. I'm like stuff around the house. I'm cleaning. I'm doing things that I feel like balance out my digital life. So it's like, I'm always on. 
Okay. But to me, it's like it's a different work and it balances itself out. Yeah. Okay. But at eight o'clock at night, I'm like, come on, stop. Sometimes, <laughs> Sometimes yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. I will say I'm reading the book Atomic Habits. Mm -hmm. And have you ever read that? No, it's. Do you know what it is? I think yes. we own it's it. It's a pretty yeah. big book. Yeah. No. We don't have it. It's a we yellow book. We will be owning it soon. Oh, okay. What's it's <laughs> the one Iliad Kipchoge okay, was just right. promoting. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's wait, on his, like on his Instagram or something? Yeah, yeah, he did a book list. Oh, okay, yeah. So I would say, like, that's one of the things they talk about is attaching the habits mm -hmm. to another habit. Uh, that's, like, a, a pretty common I thing. I have yeah. attached drinking martinis <laughs> to watching TV. <laughs> to 5, to 5 yeah. p.m. every day. Yeah. 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 Um, anyway, yeah. Yeah, it's very easy to attach bad habits to other bad habits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird how that works. <laughs> anyway, so our running's going well. Yeah. We're getting through grit. Robbie's starting it a little bit late this this year, but he's on board. Oh, um, as per the running, I think I'm just trying to do like five miles a day just for cool. the grit. Like four to five miles a day and a long run. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. that works. All right, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Good. Yeah. But anyway, so that's what we're doing for grit. Uh, you can follow us, obviously, on Strava. You can check our stories. If you want to share your grit stuff, go ahead and send it in. Tag us. We will uh, like and share. So do that. But let's move on to a shoe that we just started talking about or just did a review for, basically a mini review. Do we do the real review? We haven't done the real review yet. Oh. But we did the Adidas. you got to say it correctly. Megan, can you say it? Adidas. Right. Uh, what is what do you what is it? The Primex. It's the Adidas. Adi Adidas. Adidas Adi Zero Primex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nailed and it. You can't see this shoe if you're listening, but if you're watching, this is a like. It's what's the giant megalodon? Is the giant oh, yeah. shark? Yeah. yeah. This is the megalodon of running, running shoes. shoes. Fifty it, millimeter stack in the heel of Light Strike Pro foam. And I think it's not. I think it's like forty four in that in the forefoot it's or something ridiculous. It's like what a normal rear shoe would be in a racing shoe this the stack in the toes how many and, inches do you think 50 millimeters is two uh, and a half uh yeah two and a half sounds right it's actually less than two 1.97 that's 1.97 inches mm -hmm. that is 1.97 yeah inches. yeah all right think about a ruler that's yeah this is a and shoe that I struggled to run, and I actually had to cut the run short. Uh, yeah, that was the Christmas Day run. Remember oh, yeah. That? Yeah. Thomas was, that was definitely the most entertaining run that I've been on with Thomas. Yeah, so I'm with Meg and Robbie thinking that this new super shoe is going to have me blasting out the paces. Meanwhile, I felt like I was working harder than both of you guys to, one, stay up, but also just to keep the pace. Like, I, it was not, like, I thought... Especially that guy who won the half marathon wearing these. Yeah, and that is that actually is crazy when you think about that. Yeah. So it's the same foam as what? Light Strike Pro, so which is in what other shoes? It's oh, in the Takumi Sen, the Audios Pro. So it is um, in the Pro. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it also has a plate. It, so it's no, the, it doesn't have a plate. It has the energy rods. Oh, there's no but plate. It, is that not a plate right there? This here in the toe thing. That that is a plate. Yeah, maybe it's a plate. It's not carbon. It's like aluminum or something. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of why this wouldn't be a fast shoe. I think on the right person, it probably would be for me. Just didn't work. I, I think I was spending so much time trying to stabilize over the top of the shoe. Robbie made a point that you're not sinking. It's like not like this 50 millimeter stack. It's something that you're sinking into and cups your foot. You're like sitting on top of this thing. And it's, so it's squirrely as hell. It says it does have a carbon heel plate. Okay. Which is weird. Why would you need a carbon plate in your heel? When there's 50 millimeters I of know. foam. Um, well, to, I guess to provide some sort of stabilization. Yeah, yeah probably other than that, it'd be pipe. You know what I do wonder, though, if I would have liked the shoe? Because, I mean, let's be honest. Like, out on the trails, you're not exactly agile. And I'm agile. <laughs> and, you should um, see some of the falls I can I'm, step out of. <laughs> I'm wondering if I would feel a little bit more stable than you out there. I'm also I'm also closer to the ground. I actually think you would like this shoe a lot. The only thing is, like, you can see that it's got a very narrow heel. Yeah. But apparently the way they design women's shoes is narrow heel, wider toe. And, and I think about all of the super shoes, they have a super narrow heel. Yeah, but, but this one, like, 
If there was uneven pavement, I was like going sideways. But again, I might go back to this is a you problem. It could very likely it could mm -hmm. be. I can't imagine they spent this much time <laughs> building a shoe that nobody can run in. <laughs> but yeah, so you can check that out. We're doing a whole Adidas lineup, like what's the best Adidas shoe for you kind of thing. Do you say Adidas the whole time? I try to. I Robbie, say, do you I, say Adidas? I try to. I slide in Adidas, Adidas here is every once in a while. Adidas is so pretentious. We were listening to a, a podcast the other day, and it was like a professional brand. And oh, said Adidas. it was Shoe Wars, and it was yeah. Adidas. I think we should Nike. just make a decision and stick to it. I got to go with Adidas. I can't stop saying Adidas you now. But you're like... And I sound like a real jackhole, like, I know. Yeah, you're like uh, American when they say <laughs> croissant. Yeah, but his name, the guy's name was Adidas. Yeah, that was his name. Like it'd be like if I if I if your name was Robbie we're and I was like no we're just gonna call I'm it pretty sure you Rover. say my last name wrong so it's fine Redinger Redinger okay Redinger you do, you do say it right I got the hard G most Redinger. people say Redinger so I used to and for I don't sure. even correct them because it's pointless nobody pronounces my name correctly Neuberger yeah Neuberger according to iPhone <laughs> that's how I'm supposed to <laughs> yeah. say it? well German is no no Neu no it's oh. Neuberger no, it's Neuberger in the United States but if you're in Germany oh okay perfect Neuberger. example. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Why are we saying Neuberger? Because I'm not I even do. sure if that was our real name or the one that we just escaped <laughs> Europe. Uh, yeah, when under, you're over it. Yeah, we, we lied and said that. Our name is Neuberger. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. If you don't even know. Yeah. Came, I, like when they give you the name when you come into Ellis Island or whatever. Yeah, and of all the names to choose, that's such a beautiful one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. A new burger is better than an old burger. If I was going to well, eat a burger. guess what? When you're growing up, one. you get called old burger. You got green boogers. Uh, you got yeah. the, whole, oh, wow. the whole thing. Yeah, it was traumatizing. Hey, Tommy Green Burgers. <laughs> yeah, green exactly. Boogers. Hey, boogers. <laughs> get over here. <laughs> oh. Oh. And that didn't help that. Uh, what was the movie? What's the movie? Uh, Noogie Burger? No, oh. there was a guy booger in it from the oh, uh, yeah. Animal House. Yeah, Animal House. Oh. Yeah. No, it, was, it when Dumb and Dumber came out, and he's like, uh, Mrs. Newbie, Noogie Burger. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. All right. Um, well, Megan, did you want to touch on the women's field for the Boston? Yes, they announced the women's pro field for Stacked. Boston this year, and they're calling it the, what is it, fastest most decorated. Most decorated we gotta in up, the history. We got to come up with a name for it, like, you know, coin a term for this field. Okay, uh, but listen to some of these American names. Molly Seidel. I like her. Heard of Sarah her. Hall. Know of her. Des Linden. Mm -hmm. Kellen Taylor. Oh, yeah. Stephanie Bruce. Ah. Uh, Nell mm. Rojas. Mm -hmm. Roberta Groner. Yep. Groan. <laughs> uh, and then there's a ton. I mean, there's a ton of other women. Do you know I what's just, crazy? The Americans are fun. Nell Rojas. Just now announced Adidas. Adidas. Oh, really? Yeah. So you better say it right. Yeah. We got a bunch. And then Sarah Vaughn. Went Ro with that's kind of cool. Her name rhymes with Rojas Adidas. Yeah. Rhymes. Maybe yeah. that's why she chose Maybe them. that's probably why she did. She's like, Puma Smart. doesn't work. <laughs> also, Smart Charlotte group. Perdue, who we interviewed on yes, the podcast, Adidas. is coming over. She's also Adidas, yeah. but she's running Boston. Um, and yeah, wow. we didn't talk about it last week because it happened after our recording, but Puma signed with Sarah Vaughn or and Sarah Vaughn signed with Puma or yeah, however it <laughs> yeah. works and Frisbee and Annie Frisbee Frisbee. Sweet. And if you haven't listened to the Frisbee interview, I, I really enjoyed that one. So check proving out. again that if you come on the drop, you're going to get, you get sponsored. sponsored pretty Basically, much that's it, how it it, works. when we talk to someone, they get sponsored. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like the next day. It's weird because we talk to each other all the time and that still hasn't happened. We're better than sponsored. Yeah. We've We're got sponsored the best gig ever. ever. <laughs> we do get up to try more shoes than yeah. the athletes. We're usually checking in with them. Oh, I haven't tried that yet. Oh, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> um, that's cool. That's going to be. So, yeah, and we're going to uh, be there in Boston. Right. So, super exciting. Yeah. Speaking of other events you don't want to miss, the Grit Party on January 22nd. It's going to be dope. Oh, we're going to yeah. have. Shoe try-ons. We're gonna have shoe giveaways. With Asics. We're gonna have one of the finest restaurants in Baltimore is providing food. Which, dude, is they better insane. be. I emailed them back yesterday, and they, I think they're just busy. possibly providing food. <laughs> possibly <laughs> getting food from Eki Ben. We'll be having drinks. We'll be doing a run to get your grit miles in. Robbie will be doing five. Other people will be doing other. Uh, maybe distances. we'll do more that day. Okay, cool. It is a Saturday. That's it, a typical oh, long run day. Oh, there we go. I think I think throwing a, a tenner before, yeah. at, during the party would be cool. It's an hour and a half run, you know, whatever. Drinks, food, all this. Did and you just, say the sweatshirts? 
I didn't say the sweatshirts, but the sw- custom not, printed not sweatshirts. Not sweatshirts, but a custom. But I think it's going to be a black sweatshirt, mm-hmm. and uh, you'll be able to grab one of those. It's free. While supplies last, but yeah, the party's free. You get to hang with us. You get to hang with our crew. There's going to be other running groups in from Baltimore, and you know we've said this: if you're in the like from New Jersey to you know Washington D.C., Richmond, Virginia, you should you should haul mm-hmm. up here and come for the party. And even though it's like a end of grit type party anyone's invited yeah yeah and i also even i even told feathers since she has to come so feathers might be oh here. wow and so, so yeah you should say what it is did we say that i don't know but again it's january 22nd 10 a.m at the at the headquarters which is 1805 eastern ave in baltimore city yeah mm-hmm. um by the way last minute th- i didn't even tell you this yet but Uh-oh. i i got oh no no, no. This your results came I'm back <laughs> Uh, You're pregnant? He's yeah. 100% that bitch. I have, I have COVID again. Oh, jeez. Um, no, I got an email today from uh, Kipchoge's management. Okay. And they have a press conference tomorrow. They're not saying what it is. All right. <gasps> Except the press conference is at 10 a.m. He's like, running Boston. Greenwich Standard Time, and that's 5 a.m. here. So mm. you're going to be in the office at 4.30? No, he's consciously getting up a half an hour early. <laughs> but I, my half an hour early right now is like 5.20, and I really don't want to do another half an hour early. But yeah, do, I don't know what it is. Uh, he's probably running Boston. You think? Brandon thinks it's because they're coming out with a... Alpha Fly 2? And then running team documentary. I don't think that's... <gasps> Ooh, I don't that's know if fun, that's though. Why. I don't so, know waking up at 5 that fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I like I, ha- I had to do it, right? Yeah. <sighs> no, I'll do it. I'll Would get you? up. I mean, I'll be up anyway. Yeah. Okay. And you can ask him questions if you want. Oh, I got to talk to him well, oh, at five in the morning. Yeah. There's opera- that means I got to wake up like early, early. Yeah. All right. I mean, I might unvolunteer. You don't have no, to. You, you don't do have it. to ask. Him. I've you, interviewed him. Robbie's interviewed him. Now it's your turn. People are going to be so pissed when they hear this. They're going to be like, Meg's turning down a chance to talk to. <laughs> so Ilya are Kipchoge. both of you? <laughs> no, we've already. Talked I have to him. plans. <laughs> okay. To be honest, when you started that that sentence and you were like, "I got to tell you," I got an email from Kipchoge. I thought that's like you were going to be like, "Now we're talking." Like we're emailing. Like Ilya and I are. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, basis no. where we email each other. It was Kipchoge's management. Yeah. She had to wait for that word. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, though. I mean, you guys are clearly BFF. Yeah, we yeah. do. I mean, we talked several times last year. Yeah, he actually, that Atomic Habits copy he sent to me and hand signed. Yeah. He ran it over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just dropped by the house. <laughs> um, he's actually one of the partners on our group. Thing that I'm doing this yeah is him Taylor me accountable. <laughs> <laughs> I would yes. try to do his accent but I can't so do you know who these people are sir Dave I, I, is that a famous person I think he's from Enios. oh that's the thing it's with Enios. so it's news from Enios. oh so do you think it's like a new challenge that I can't imagine like I'm not doing the sub two again um I think sub, sub one fifty nine <laughs> <laughs> he could do this uh Sub something half, maybe. Nah. No. Nah. You've, you've reached Mount you Everest. Do you don't, thing. like, add a step stool to it. What, um, what could it possibly be? 159? You think it could be a 159 challenge? No, like that'd be a little... actual breaking 159? That'd be a little nuts. No, it's got to be something about uh, training. It has to either be with the, the NN group or... Now I think it's a documentary. No, but it's with Ineos, who did the sub two. I think sponsored it's a do- the sub two I think thing. it's a documentary now. Ineos did that whole movie. All right. right. Well, guess how we're going to find out, Megan. (laughs) You're getting up real early tomorrow. If you want me to get up early, I'll do it. Are you going to do it? If she wakes me up. (laughs) (laughs) So the the other guests on the thing are Valentin. I don't, it's hard to say. He was, uh, he was an athlete representative, athlete coordinator for the Ineos challenge global sports communication and then the other guy was sir dave brailsford who is he was the guy who i remember him from the movie he was like the head yeah yeah. he was like the yeah he's in the movie maybe they are doing another challenge maybe that'd be cool nah what else is left this is the coach that coached the whole ineos challenge thing so he's one of the game all right We'll find Sub out. 130. I mean, honestly, if you follow our content, you'll probably find out before this podcast comes live because we publish an article yeah. about it. Yeah. All right. So we got a, a killer Boston crowd. We got a possible 
crazy thing from Iliad. I think now we should go into our uh, Forset interview. Guest of the week. Our interview this week is with Justin Forsett from Hustle Clean. He also used to play for the Baltimore Ravens, which I found out that Robbie is not a Ravens fan. Even yeah. He lives in Baltimore. I'm actually kind of wish we would have recorded it this week since the Steelers just beat oh, the Ravens. Ah, oh, boo. And <laughs> the, the thing is, Justin was here. He played for the Ravens. It was during our good years where we didn't lose to the Steelers and not go into the, the uh, playoffs. But, um, yeah, so Hustle Clean is a interesting concept that actually has a lot more uses than we thought than just wiping yourself off after you finish running. But uh, it's an interesting interview, so check it out. 